Hi and welcome back to the next video. This is Jason from Effective Maintenance Dashboards. In this video I'm going to talk about something that lots and lots of users have asked for and that is how can we link through to our Maximo system. So we've been in here and we've we've created a dashboard and the users are really asking if I want to know which work orders are waiting to be complete or comp I'm waiting for just a history to be entered. I want to be able to click through into that and go and actually update that work order without having to um, to go into the Maximo system and then search for this work order. So how do we do that? So I'm going to show you in this video. So the first thing we do is we have I've logged in here to the Maximo demo asset management system. Okay, so this is an asset management system that Maximo makes available for new customers to try out and look at the new features if they're thinking of upgrading they can go in here and they can try out this system and here's the username and here's the password I think it must get refreshed every night or every every week with um, with new information or, or with a refresh with the base information so if you do make changes don't expect them to stick around for too long um, I'm just using this to demo to you how you would actually set up this URL so I've opened up the Maximo system here and I've logged on and I've downloaded a list of the work orders and this is just to give us some data to work with. So I've downloaded a list of work orders, I just downloaded this to an Excel file and then I imported that information or that list of work orders into this Power BI file. So we've got that list of work orders here. I've created a couple other bits and pieces here. So how do we start to create a URL? So I'm going to cover three options. The first option is going to be where we cover this, or the first two options are going to look at making this a URL that you can click on, which I think is by far the most intuitive option. And then there's a third option where we can add an additional column that will have a link in it. So you, if you don't want to link it from here, you can add an additional column and that column will have a link in it. So let's start with option number one. So for option number one, we're going to create a new measure. So create a new measure here. And we're going to call this measure work max maximal work order URL. And we're going to call it V1. And we're going to go across to my slide here and I'm going to copy this URL and then I'm going to talk you through what's actually in there. So before, well let's paste this in. So what we're going to do here is we're going to actually construct a URL. Now just so I can put that in place, the website that I used to get this information and I'll leave a link below this video is here. And it's by a, a, a guy called Bruno Potolulli. Probably not pronounced correctly, but um, this guy created this back in 2012, actually, but still valid today. And what what we've outlined here is that how you set up this URL. So it's HTTP and then the host name. So the host name in this example here is this bit here. This bit here is the host name, max slash dev 76 mrocom Then once you've got the host name set up, you then add in um, this, this text here, which is maximal, maximal URL, so that's fine. And then we've got a range of different arguments. And the arguments are how you, the events or yeah, the arguments are the parameters you pass to tell the Maximo system what to do when it accepts this URL. So if we scroll down, there's a few different options here. And if we get to this one here, we've got one for the work order. And we can see here, we're going to load the work order tracking and we're going to add in the work order number, which is the field for the work order number. And we're going to pass it a number. And that number there is going to be a field that we're going to calculate in the measure. Okay, so if we go back into here, we have got the string here, which is the information. We're going to load up work order tracking. We're going to pass it an SQL query, 
and this is going to be the number we're going to pass. Now what I'm going to do is rather than add this number here, I'm going to reference, I'm going to put a close quotes and and, and I'm going to reference in here the max and it's going to be work order number. Now the reason we use max, we could use min um, if we wanted to, but is that we've got, because it's a measure, we've got to reference a, a calculation, a max, a min, an average, and um, and that's the um, and that's the only reason we're using max. But because we're going to be using it on a line context, so the filter context here will be seven seven one eight eight. So the max value or the min value, the only value is going to be seven one eight eight. Okay, so that's going to be fine to use that. Uh, and then we're going to put another um, percentage here and put in brackets and ampersand here and this is going to give us our URL. So we're going to use the URL that we've constructed and we're going to insert the yeah that should work. We're going to insert the work order number for the line that we are currently um, in focus. So for the example, this line here, that will be 1788. This one will be 1007, etc, etc. So how do, we do, how do we do that? So we go into the format and for the table and we are going to go to conditional formatting and there's an option here web URL. So we're going to switch that on and it's going to ask us for a field value and we'll open this up and we're going to search for this field here. And I've chosen site rather than work order number so let's go back and we will choose and here we forgot to choose that there so let's go back and I'm going to choose work order number. And we'll go back in here Field value. I'm going to go into this again. Okay, so we can see we now have a hyperlink here, and if you hover over it, we can see that it has inserted the value. If you look at the very end there, it's inserted the value of the work order. And if I click on one of these, it's going to ask me to log in. Now, most organisations will have a single sign-on. If you don't, you will need to log in. And then it's going to open up and it's going to display that work order in the list. So this first option is the first problem I've come across and it may be just to the system I'm using but what is actually happening behind the scenes? If you go into advanced search is that it's passing a piece of SQL where the work order number equals 1581. Now what it doesn't do is it doesn't open up the work order number so you would need to click on here and then open up the work order number. So the second, so that's the first option. Now the second option has got some pros and cons when compared to the first option. And let me just talk you through that. So if I go back to Power BI and we're going to go and add in another measure. And I'm going to copy this one here. <clears throat> and this will be called Maximo Work Order URL V2. I'll paste that in. And let's construct this. So the, there's a few differences here. The, the, the main one is this bit here. The, the parameter at the end is um, WNUM equals 1000. Now I'm going to change that to an ampersand max work order number and ampersand. In fact, actually, that is it. That's all we need. Uh, let me just double check. Maybe there's a quote at the end. So no, it just equals one thousand. So if I now then go and add that in, we'll see what happens. So 
I'm going to go and I'm going to change the conditional format in here. I'm going to reference URL version 2. And I'm going to click on here. Now what's happened here is we've got a list of all of the work orders where this value here 2007 is actually part of the work order number. So there's a slight difference in the where clause that's passed. This one is like percentage two, so it's, it's, it's carrying out a search rather than specifically requesting one work order. However, if you are confident that you have got a unique work order number, so in the um, in the actual system that I've got, we prefix all our work orders with WO. So I'm fairly confident that if we pass it, there's not going to be anything else that's got WO and then a, a sequence of numbers or that particular sequence of numbers. However, in this in this system, we have got a combination of different um, numbering conventions. So it's pulling that back. However, if we go back into our report and if we sort this, let me choose one of these ones, which are a little bit more obscure. Um, and click on that. Because that's unique, it only returned one value. And in this example here, where we passed it a like SQL statement, it opened up the the um, it opened up the work order straight away. Okay, so if you've got a unique number and you're fairly confident you're going to return a unique number, then you can use that second option. Now there's a third option. So the third option is that you can actually call a function within the work order. So you can open the work order. And in the example we're going to cover, we're going to go and view the costs. So we're going to actually open this work order and view the costs. So let's look at that one. So let's go back to our Power BI. We're going to add another measure. And in this measure, we're going to copy it again from option two. This measure here uses the unique ID identifier. Okay, uses the unique ID identifier. And then it adds on here additional events equals view costs. Okay, and you need to use the unique identifier with this one here. So let's go back into here. So we don't have the unique identifier. That's a database, but probably it's something that an end user would never normally see. So we're going to have to construct a unique identifier. And then um, we're probably going to just to show you how it works, just to show you the concept, I'm going to go and add a unique, I have added a unique ID field on here. Now this is just a number from one through to however many, 777. Um, so it won't necessarily correspond to the, let me just pull that in, to the actual unique ID for each of these particular work orders. However, it will let you see how the, um, the function works. So let's give it that unique ID. There we go. Um, and we're going to add a new measure here. So, new measure. And I'm going to call this one Maximal Work Order URL D3 equals. And we're going to do a similar thing here. So this is the, there's a, a space there, just make sure everything else looks okay. Now in here, in fact actually, I'm going to show you a different option here. I'm going to show you the option to create this as an actual column. Now the reason I'm going to show you this is just to let you see that there's a, there is another, um, another option here. So rather than create it as a measure, we're going to create it as a column. So let's go and add a new column. And we're going to go and add a new column. And I'm going to call this maximal URL link equals. And everything else is the same here. Um, however, in here, we need to reference the unique ID. 
Now because it's a column in a table, we just need to call it the unique ID. Um, and unique ID should be in here. Yep. So remember it's not a calculation, it's just a reference in a field, so we don't need to max it um, and you can prefix it with the max like we did with the measure. And then we will put this in here. Yeah, so I think that's gonna be gonna be fine. And uh yeah, that's fine. So we're gonna add that column in to the, the table. And you can see here we've got the text that um that's been constructed with that unique ID. So a couple of things we need to do. We need to first of all go into column tools and we need to categorize this as a web URL. And then the other thing we need to do here is it's turned it into a link, but it sometimes won't do that by default. So I'll just show you how that works. If you go to values and if you just make sure this URL icon is switched on, I think I had it switched on when I did a bit of testing with this. So normally what will happen is it'll turn it into a hyperlink, but it will just show you the URL, but you want to turn it into icon. And what this is going to do is it's going to display the actual costs. So we may actually want to change this to view costs, view maximal costs. And that's probably makes sense if you want to use one of these links here. So you might not want to just go and open the work order with this one, but this one's going to take you in and it's going to view the costs. Now this is going to open up a work order with an internal ID of one. So it's not going to be this one here, which is T1742, but just to see the concept, we're just going to click on this one here. So we've got this value here. And if I click on here, you can see, it's opened up. Now it just happens to be that work order with internal value ID of one is one six three seven, but one six three eight. But you get the idea. It opens up the work order and it provides you with the costs. How smart is that? Okay, so hopefully you found this useful, and you've got some ideas about how you can integrate links to Max to, to your Maxmo system into your Power BI dashboard. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you want to keep up to date with the videos I'm going to be re releasing over the next few months, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you ring that bell and you get a notification of the latest videos. And thanks for listening. I'll talk to you in the next video.